Cheers. If I lie and say that was vodka, will you be impressed? I say a lot that religion isn't harmless. I have it written on all my social media pages. But it seems like oftentimes when I say that, people assume I'm talking about extremism, like Jonestown or Jehovah's Witnesses. But I'm not. Not exclusively, anyway. Of course cults are a big problem, and of course they have to be talked about. As long as they keep getting and maintaining members, they need to be discussed. But today that's not what I'm talking about, because I want to make it abundantly clear that I see great amounts of harm in more casual religions as well. Now there's a lot to talk about on this subject, so it is my intention to make this a series instead of just one video. For today, let's talk about how religious children have a more difficult time distinguishing reality from fantasy than secular children. A couple of studies were done on five and six year old kids. I'm going to sum this up for you as much as I can, but it was very interesting to read the study and I'll link it below. I highly encourage you to read it yourself. They told kids three versions of a story. The religious version, Joseph was sent to see a mean king, but God sent Joseph many dreams about really bad storms, and Joseph used those dreams to help the king save his people. The king was so impressed that they became friends. The fantastical version, Joseph was sent to see a mean king, but Joseph used his magical powers to see into the future and see that there'd be bad storms. The king was so impressed with Joseph that they became friends. And of course, the more realistic version. Joseph was sent to see a mean king, but Joseph was really good at looking at the clouds and seeing when there'd be storms. The king was so impressed with this that him and Joseph became friends. They told the kids that some of these stories were real and some of them were fake, and had the kids categorize them in a real box and a pretend box. When doing these experiments, they took children both from public schools and religious schools, and they asked the kids from both schools whether or not they attended church regularly. Kids who did attend church and religious schools were obviously more likely to put the religious stories in the real box than the secular kids. But they were also more likely to put the fictitious stories, the ones that were not meant to be realistic, into the real box as well. In fact, it seems that the more a child was exposed to religion, the more likely they were to put the fantastical stories in the real box versus the pretend box. They did this kind of study again, sorta. Only this time they didn't include the word God in the stories or any other familiar biblical names like Moses or Jesus or whatever. They took stories that were both biblically familiar and stories that were not biblically familiar. And they were specific to use the word magic about half the time in the stories. So like instead of saying Moses parted the Red Sea, they would say John used his magic stick to part the waters or John waved a random stick to part the waters. Once again, secular children were more likely to categorize the magical stories as pretend, while more religiously exposed children were likely to categorize the fantastical stories as real. In my opinion, this kind of shows that religion is leaving our children vulnerable and gullible. I think back to when I was in fifth grade, and Candace and Steven, who lived across the street and were in my class and stuff, were so easily able to convince me that they were actually ghosts and had the bodies of their younger siblings. I wonder if I'd have been less gullible had I not been raised in religion and thus less likely to have to remember this embarrassing experience. But it can be so much worse than just embarrassment. It can be somebody telling a kid that they have magical powers that can show them a real life candy land or take them to see their favorite TV show character and then kidnapping them and doing what bad guys do. Or it could be somebody telling a kid that they have magic beans and selling it to them and taking all of their allowance. Okay, my first story was way worse than the second one, but nevertheless, ripping a kid off is still bad. I don't know if I've made this particularly obvious in previous videos or anything, but I care greatly about children. I spent two years working with special needs kids, including children with developmental disabilities and children with emotional disturbances, and I loved every single one of those kids that I had the pleasure of working with. The job I'm on a sort of break from right now is also working with kids up at the YMCA. You know, I I'm not sure that they're gonna let me go back to working there if they find this channel though, because it is a Christian organization. 
I also worked briefly at a preschool where they badly mistreated the children and I quit very quickly and called social services on them. I've actually had many conversations with social services. I've had to report abuse on many occasions and it breaks my heart whenever I have to see a child suffer. So if this is something I can do to help prevent the suffering of children, make it abundantly clear that religion can be harming your kids, then I'll do it. Happy to. My point is, I care about children. Religion is leaving them vulnerable and I am so not cool with that. Thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Maybe leave a comment if you want to. Subscribe for more content from me in the future. And as always, stay unholy, my friends.